former House of Representatives Minority Leader Dr. Wumi Bewaji has observed that the appointments made by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu are not lopsided, contrary to insinuation in some quarters. Bewaji, who is the Executive Secretary Coalition of Democrats for Electoral Reform, spoke against the backdrop of comments that Tinubu's appointments were concentrated in Yoruba land, stating that he sees no lopsidedness here and insists on the appointments being fair and balanced. Joining us to discuss this is Are Dotsun Hassan. He's a legal practitioner and president of Yoruba Council Worldwide. Um, Dotsun, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Good evening. Great. It's a pleasure. Let's start by looking at uh, Mr. President's appointments so far. I mean, the most recent of those appointments is the um, CBN governor, who's yet to be um, ratified by the National Assembly, and two young people a Minister for Youth and a Minister of State for Youth Affairs. Uh, many people, um, a few weeks ago, a group of persons had said that Mr. President's cabinet is Lagos-based as opposed to, um, you know, spreading it. And these were not just people from other regions of the country. These were people from the Southwest. What are your thoughts on that? Well, to really clarify, um, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu is a destabilized Nigerian, is a man that knows his honours, is a man that uh, chose uh, his disciple with eagle heart, and uh, is not sentimental about the way he's been appointing um, his cabinet. You can see from the spread of his ministerial appointment, definitely uh, he peaked in, in consonance with the national spread. Um, prior before now, his essays, his, um, his uh, aids and all that are all from the north, from the east, from the south-south. I don't think uh, there is a Lagos voice, uh, Toga, as far as his appointment is concerned. Um, there might be some concern about, oh, these guys are people that have been around. Actually, you will never appoint uh, a dollar. Uh, you will never even appoint, um, especially to... To, to oversee some sensitive position that he needs results, uh, he would definitely go for the best. And from the, from the world goal, looking at the FIRS appointment, you can see these are people that have been as part of his, uh, in the inner cabinet on the, uh, that is, uh, um, the, the, the FIRS board. Now we have the Cardoso, the, the CBN, and then uh, we've equally Cutting all other appointments that are of other races within his cabinet. So, um, most um, courageous enough to have um, given the, the nod to ensure we have economic stability. Nigeria, for a long time, we are, we are really yet to uh, feel the, the essence of democracy, the essence of governance. I can bet you we are really getting um, the, the much expected results of a president uh, who understands both the foreign policy and, uh, and, uh, and his, uh, local, uh, his own inner governors uh, properly. What, 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 resu that what results are you making it. reference to, uh, if I might ask? Yes, if you look at the economic policy and the planning at that day, and in terms of um, foreign direct investment assurance, as of today, they just secured uh, the Chinese um, um, north for the for the rail line of Abuja rail line. And and from as of yesterday, even during the UN uh, side uh, meeting to, with uh, Exxon Mobil, with uh, companies, with a lot of other interests, I think it's enough assurance and it's giving confidence. Is providing leadership both at the at the ECOWAS level and also within the country. So leadership is very key in governance. That is one key thing that you must really um, um, salute the, the the president for. The president is not uh, running a one-man show and he's not running an ethnic um, um, pseudo governance. We have witnessed what ethnic pseudo governance means. So this is not a Yoruba government. There might be some level of people that have worked with him from the time past. If you look at his SDF, the SDF is from the, the middle belt. So, he, he, and 
Look at how much he's been growing his office. You know that this is a man that understands the youth. Looking at the arrays of youth, this is the government for the first time that pride youth appointment. Go and look at the, the recent <laughs> appointment of all the essays. They are in the bracket of youth. I don't know. Since, 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 you've, since you've gone to the youth part, I, I want to thank you for going there. Um, you talked about the you know, economic policy direction of the government. Might I ask what exactly it is? Because Nigerians are trying to understand what Mr. President's economic policy plan is. That's one. Secondly, um, with how bad our economy is and the downturn that we're facing with the post-subsidy you know, removal era, why do we need a Minister of Youth and a Minister of State for Youth? How smart a move is that? Because you're singing the praises of the President, all fine and well, but is that a smart thing to do in an economy that's very bloated already? Especially when we should be cutting the cost, cost of governance. So, uh, governance is a system. Appointment of officials in key positions that need to drive the government are very important. And in terms of the innovation Ashwaju is bringing, in terms of having Minister of State in some places and at the same time dividing the Ministry of uh, Transport to the economy and transport, that of the youth will feel the need to balance the tide among the, both the female and the male so that there can be, and also to give the women a voice. So, how, I, how best can we uh, appreciate a president who, in his wisdom, believes that the economic blueprint that we are set down at the moment, looking at the way his cleanup exercise is moving like a tsunami within the CBN, you could, from your own look, know how the CBN, has, um, um, the recoveries from the CBN as a date. We are also getting feelers as regards is a uh, blueprint in camping, um, the real re-administration, uh, 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 re-overhauling of NMPC. You can see how, for the first time, you can see how much NMPC is already dumped, uh, 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 um, remitting in the federation account. Dr. I, I am so, I'm so glad. I really appreciate you for helping yeah. me to go in the directions where I want to go tonight. Let's talk about the NMP. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the NMPC. It's a limited liability company now. It's, lim it's, it's, it's supposed to do business and, and of course, accrue monies. But, but let's leave that part. As of yesterday, Dangote has been said to import crude oil into this country. Um, in the next two weeks, they're going, to have, they're going to take receipt of the crude. Um, this is what the refinery is going to be refining. But yet, the NNPC has told us that they are giving, they cannot supply crude oil to Dangote because they have pledged the oil, our crude, to an African bank so that they can use it to pay loans. Uh, and so the average Nigerian is asking how the NNPC is working to benefit Nigeria and Nigerians and to ameliorate our sufferings even after we've taken out this subsidy. Help me make sense of this move by the NNPC to send our crude out of the country. They have not been able to tell us who and who they're giving this crude apart from the bank whom they have said allegedly they want to give uh, in payment of loans. But the other entities, they have been tight-lipped about it. How is this going to help us and our economy that again is in a state of limbo? Well, before now, before now, I think um, one of our own positions from the table of the Uber Council worldwide, and uh, I like a lot of like minds, is the fact that uh, the way the NMPC is currently positioned uh, is, is highly opaque, uh, um, infested with a lot of corruption. And uh, for the fact that Mr. President is wanting to get it right, I believe he, he understands his uh, game plan. Um, in view of uh, your question to, to that effect, for me, my first advice is that um, there, is a, there is a need for total cleanup of the NMPC. I will not give a total nod that the NMPC has really met the expectation of Nigerians for many years down the line. NMPC has always been, to me, uh, just like an ATM to 
some um, chronic um, corrupt elements. And uh, in view of the fact that he's our president, we still need to let him know that uh, the, he's not just booting out the NMPC, but there is a need for total audit. As what we are getting of the, the CDM, we need to a total audit. But as far as the NMPC um, making the entire uh, oil and gas sector a collateral to a bank without appropriate um, admittance by the National Assembly, because for you to guarantee the national asset, uh, because a whole lot of these are just coming out under this administration, meaning these have always been in existence in the previous administration. And it shows the fact that uh, there is still much needed intervention. Much needed intervention beyond the fact that the president is coming up with a policy-driven uh, plan to ensure that both the oil and gas and the petroleum sector are divided and then there is a need for um, uh, uh, decentralizing the distribution, refinery, and all that, the refinery, because the, we know as a date, the, the country's uh, refineries are yet to be on, on the capacity to work. But Mr. President has given assurance as part of his plan to re-overhaul the, the entire oil and gas sector. But for the Gangote to import and the need to, 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 of the NFC not to sell to Gangote, I believe it's a, it's a crude um, policy plan by the NMPC. And that is why I want to advise Mr. President that there is a need to really shake up NMPC beyond just retiring those who's, uh, who's, uh, who are just 15 months to retire. But not just for them to retire. There is a need to really um, um, filter the entire NMPC gamut. All the, net, all the networks of the NMPC, there is a need for total uh, audit. As you can remind, uh, 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 maybe let me remind you, some years back, um, the former governor of Kaduna State, Erufai, mentioned that from the day NFTC is established to this moment, there have not been 20 naira audit of what NMPC is making. How come NMPC is now trying to show um, and remit money and trying to show some element of, um, of um, I'll call it uh, some chameleonic uh, uh, positioning of themselves to us, uh, it won't undermine the fact that we are not satisfied with the pricing of the petroleum product as I did due to the landing costs and all the necessary things. But, Mr. President, because the issue of oil and gas, there is a need because these are areas that concern you and I. There's no way we need to begin to. Um, pass anyone in the back as the gas this whole NMPC area. This is an area that we want president to, to pay very uh, um, um, uh, much needed attention to firstly audit, also to put a price which we cannot continue to afford the, the, the over 600 era or proposed increment. But for the fact that NMPC is not a, a private Land, uh, uh, um, a private liability, uh, 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 limited company, there is a need for us to really understand because there is still um, much nexus within, in the, between the federal government and the NNPC because the entire asset that the company is managing belongs to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. And from the exclusive listing of the Constitution, this is still the asset of Nigeria. So NFTC is only playing a managerial capacity like a consultant to the federal government. Okay. But we still hold it. And that is why, as you are asking me this question, I'm only trying to throw more light into it that okay. there is a need for president to ensure that there is reduction in the pricing of the fuel, okay. and there is a need to also bring the, the exchange rate, dollar rating of, of, of the country by ensuring the local market, by ensuring our refinery work. Because okay. if our own refinery is working at 100% capacity, okay. I'm sure there should be 15 per liter of oil. Uh, 
Okay, Dawson, let me bring you back to what brought us to NNPC, what, because we're almost out of time. Um, as at yesterday or day before, we realized from some investigative reports that subsidy is not necessarily gone, because um, as at August, the federal government had paid 169.4 billion naira to subsidize fuel and petrol in this country. But Mr. President did make us believe that subsidy was gone. Again, there are several questions that need to be answered by Mr. President and those who work around him. I go back again to ask, why do we need two ministers for youth? What are these two people going to do that one person cannot do? Should Mr. President not be thinking about reducing the cost of governance working with a small group of people who can deliver as opposed to breaking the record of having so many people on his roster. This is your final um, answer as we wrap up. Well, to me, I believe um, in view of the fact that uh, the, let's talk about the cabinet. The cabinet is a balanced uh, cabinet. Balanced in the sense that uh, the workings of the of the office of the president, uh, especially considering the height of poverty that we have in the land, the height of um, um, the, 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 the tension that we currently have in almost every sector of the economy, requires a rejigging, requires a reconstruction. Nigeria at the moment is undergoing reconstruction. If this is not a matter of a lane a batting of, uh, um, of, uh, of the former president, um, uh, Muhammad Buhari, and uh, to a batting of Ashwaju. Ashwaju is coming up with a new driving force. Okay. Trying to fix all the necessary loopholes we, as far as the country is concerned. Well, we have to go, Dotson. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we do not have time. We've run out of time. Dotson Hassan is a legal practitioner. He's also the president of Yoruba Council Worldwide. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. I want to thank you all for watching. We'll be back tomorrow talking about the latest political stories and talking for development. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.